worship this morning. Glad you are able to join us online. Before we begin, we have a few announcements to share with you. For worship this morning, we will be doing the Liturgy of Communion. So for those of you that drove by church to pick up consecrated elements, please have them handy. If that is not you, we invite you to gather up some bread and wine or similar elements uh, as we proceed through that liturgy. We trust that God will figure out the rest. Secondly, I wanna share with you that the Holy Trinity Church Council met online this last week, and we agreed to adhere to the vice of our bishop. Our bishop has recommended that we uh, continue to meet for online worship for the remainder of May. And so near the end of May, we will gather again and discern how it is that we proceed from there, whether we will open up slowly or not. Uh, so to be very clear, we will not be gathering in person at Holy Trinity for worship or other meetings during the month of May. So while we'll miss meeting with all of you in person, our, our first priority is your safety. And so we're going to do everything possible to honor that request and maintain the life of faith that is so rich among us by all of our activity online. Last but not least, we have a special event to celebrate this morning, or actually two. Here at Holy Trinity, uh, we do recognize birthdays, uh, but there are certain birthdays that we go a little bit further with. And so if you are among us and you turn 90 years of age or 100 years of age, we sing to you for your birthday. So this morning, we have two birthdays we want to acknowledge. Uh, uh, Preston Loomis and Pat Kenning will both turn 90 uh, in the next two weeks. And so uh, Preston and Pat, this next song is for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Preston Pat. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. We praise you for your life-giving love that comes to us through water, for the life of water in our baptismal font and for the water we encounter in creation. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life that only you can give. To you be given the honor, praise through Christ Jesus in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our good shepherd, you know your sheep by name, and you lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your wise voice, that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. May your life and your love sing through our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the Children's Sermon. Today our story focuses on the shepherd and the sheep. And in the story, Jesus is like a shepherd. And um, he helps his sheep, he guides his sheep, he feeds his sheep, and more importantly, he keeps them safe. And so I was thinking today a lot about how we have shepherds in our lives, especially as kids. Who are the shepherds in your lives? And I'm thinking a number of you might say your teachers who help you learn, but probably the shepherds that you experience the most in your lives are your parents, right? Your parents, they keep you safe, they feed you, they, they herd you a little bit, um, and they do all sorts of things to help you grow up healthy and safe. Um, and the question is, why do they even bother? Because you know, at the end of the day, that's a lot of work. Why would they do that? Well, you know what? Those shepherds, our parents, they do it for the same reason Jesus loves all of his sheep. They do it because they love you. And so I want you to remember that today, that the Jesus who is in our scripture today uh, is demonstrating amazing love for all of his vulnerable sheep. But more importantly, that shepherd love is close to you at home every day. And so your assignment today and this week is to go and hug the shepherds in your life and tell them how much you appreciate all that they do. And remember that when they ask you to do something to keep you safe, they're doing it because they love you. And so let's pray about that today. Get your hands ready. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for shepherds who share that love in all sorts of ways. Help us, God, share that love with all other people who are vulnerable. And help us, God, remember that we're all sheep. In Jesus' name, amen. 
reading from Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Word of God, word of life. The Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he is brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have life abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When I think about the good news of Jesus Christ that emerges from the Gospel of John, I always think of jazz music. I think of jazz music because so often in jazz, there is a theme that defines the core of the musical piece. But then the musicians use their own gifts and riff on that theme in their own way. The direction each musician takes the music is undetermined before they start. So in jazz music, there is always room for surprise as each musician takes the lead and offers their own variation on the theme. It's fun, it's playful, and it's different every time, although the theme remains the same. It is as simple or as complicated as they decide to make it. And then most often, they loop back and return to the core theme of the music. So it is in the Gospel of John. There is this core theme that is often offered by Jesus, and then we'll get variations on that theme. And so the text that we just read offers us a metaphor to explore the core theme that emerges out of a, a disagreement between Jesus and the Pharisees. 
the core theme for this particular text is actually the healing power of Jesus's love for all people. You see, in John chapter 9, this is the previous chapter, Jesus was being reprimanded for his behavior again. He came upon a man who was blind from birth. And the disciples asked Jesus, well, who has sinned, his parents or him? And Jesus said, neither. And then Jesus demonstrated the power of God's healing love and gave sight back to the mind, back to the man. Jesus spit in the dirt and then told him to go wash in the pool. The man heard Jesus, followed his directions, and then the man could see. But then an argument happened. The Pharisees absolutely refused to believe that the man had been blind in the first place. And then they refused to believe that the man had been healed. And most definitely, they refused to believe that it was Jesus who had done the healing. And so that is the core issue. Jesus's healing love and the inability for the Pharisees to accept that. They could not accept that sort of miracle, especially since it didn't happen according to God's law or rather their interpretation of God's law. And so everything to them about Jesus was contrary to God's law. And they couldn't deal with any kind of transformation that he was bringing. And so Jesus finally has the audacity to wonder out loud to these Pharisees, who is really blind here? Who is blind to the healing love of God demonstrated in this man? And so by the end of this laborious drama, the healed blind man made an incredible profession of faith. And upon that profession, he demonstrated both his physical and spiritual healing. And in the meantime, the Pharisees were still fuming at Jesus. They remained blind. And Jesus continued to call out their spiritual blindness when he launched into the text we had for today, the Good Shepherd Discourse. And so the Good Shepherd Discourse is actually a metaphor about the same theme. It's a variation on the same teaching. We are like the sheep. We are all vulnerable in some way, like the blind man. We all need the shepherd to lead us and guide us to the ways of safety as we, we move around the kingdom of God. We are all in need of Jesus' healing. And we are called to follow the voice that has demonstrated that kind of care to others. We're called to hear, to trust, to see, and to follow. And when we do that, when we hear and trust, see, and follow, we soon find out that we discover the kingdom the kingdom that God has intended for all of us, the kingdom that has been with us since the beginning of time. And to Jesus, this kingdom in front of us already is abundant life. That is the green pastures and still waters that are spoken about in Psalm 23. When we are attuned to the voice of Jesus, when we trust that voice of promise, when we see the evidence of love in Jesus and we participate with Jesus, in bringing that love to the world, well, that is abundant life. And that likewise is the life described in Acts 2, the first followers with whom Jesus had empowered, uh, devoted themselves to that kind of life. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. That is the abundant life in action. And in response to the gift of abundant life, they decided to give everything away and help the poor. They were so full of the spirit and the promise that they released their attachment on all their worldly goods, all their security. And Jesus became the center of their communal life together. And that was enough. And so the difficult question put before us this morning through these texts, through all these metaphors and examples is this. Do we have lives that are abundant? Or do we just have lives that are full? I wonder if there is a gift in this pandemic. I don't wish harm on anyone, but for those of us who remain healthy, there may be an opportunity in this time and space. We have an opportunity to review what is at the core of our own lives. We get to review the, the song of our lives in Jesus. We get to see what gives us life, to hold on to those patterns, and let them sing through our lives in a form of abundance. 
And likewise, we get to review what is life taking. We have a chance to, to notice the busy activity and thoughts that are off key in this Jesus jazz. In some settings, this activity, this review is called starts and stops. And we can even start small because we can't seem to plan too far in the future in these days. Just look at one day. During this pandemic, what have you stopped doing that seems to be life-giving? And what have you started doing that seems to be life-giving? For example, our endless lists of organized activities, entertainments, and events have all halted due to social distancing. And as a result, I have noticed that folks no longer rush from event to event for organized activities, mainly because they're not offered. And as a result, folks do not seem crushed by time and activity. That has stopped. Families no longer have to choose between having an informal conversation on the phone or moving to the next thing in their schedule as a have to. There is time and space for relationships like never before. And there are new patterns emerging in this time. Families who have always been separated by geography are now getting together online on Zoom or another platform to connect. Bible study groups are meeting online in virtual space. Who knew how motivated our older adult generations would be in learning an entirely new digital language so that they could participate in online communities. The second thing I've noticed in the suburbs especially is the revival of free play among our children, especially siblings who are trapped inside their own homes together. Just this last week, I heard of three little sisters who voiced out loud an appreciation for their older brothers. Who knew that brothers would be willing to dance with their sisters on TikTok and like it? And who knew there would be a revival in the playground game of kickball because you can actually practice social distancing while playing? Here's the question. When we come to the end of this pandemic chapter, will we hang on to our appreciation for relationships and the digital learning we have learned? Or will we, will we just try to go back to the way it used to be? I don't know. But I do know this. Those changes are signs. They are signs of a people who are seeking authentic relationships with God and other people. They are signs of people who are craving the abundant life in the kingdom of God. They are signs that Jesus, the good shepherd, is leading us and guiding us in a time when we are all vulnerable and unsure about what lies ahead. These are signs that can help us to trust and to hope and to love in the midst of the unknown. The kingdom is present to each and every one of us. The Jesus jazz is playing in every one of our, our secluded homes. And we are invited to play with the core theme in a different way right now. What will it look like? What will it sound like? How will it reflect the love of God at work in our lives through our own particular gifts? How will each of us kind of riff on that theme for the sake of God's love and God's people? The beauty of this Jesus jazz is like all jazz. We don't have to have it figured out in advance. We simply trust. And the power of the good shepherd will guide us along. And the abundant life of the kingdom will be made known. And then we will know that once we were blind, but now we can see. Amen. Whisper is heard when I call out.
Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Creating God, we praise you for the bounty of your creation and for those who plant and harvest crops. During this time of pandemic, bless those involved in agriculture of any kind and strengthen their hands as they feed the world. Lord, in your compassion, hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Guide all nations to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live healthy, abundant, sustainable lives. Lord, in your compassion, hear our prayer. Calming God, open our eyes to see you, Lord, in our interactions with others. Help us to extend your hospitality and inspire us to share the grace of Christ in places near and far. Use our small interactions to foster peace for all people. Nurture Holy Trinity. Nurture Holy Trinity to be a sanctuary of peace and continue to bless pastors Sonia and Randy, our staff, council, transition team, and lay leaders. Lord, in your compassion, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, shower your spirit upon communities that seek to serve you. We pray for those far from us, our sister congregation and their students in El Tronador, and our companion synods in Madagascar. We lift our brothers and sisters closer to home to you also, the Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit, Centennial Lutheran Church, New Beginnings, and the Holy Trinity Preschool. Lord, in your compassion, hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. We pray together for Stephen, Carol, Griffin, Georgina, Armanda, Baby Krantz, Lee and Carol, Nancy, Greg, the Iyer Brown family, the Salinas Johnson family, the Shalkowski family, the Shimonkevitz family, the Francis Sims family, the Von Wetter family, and our first responders and healthcare workers. Lord, in your compassion, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. And if you're at home, we invite you to share the peace any way you can. Um, but just know our peace is coming to you. And uh, we love having your letters to express your own peace. And now I just want to extend a thanks to you as a moment of gratitude for all the ways that you have supported ministry in and through your own gifts here to the Holy Trinity staff and leadership and um, program ministry. Um, one celebration we have this past month is that more than $1,500 has come in for the El Salvador Scholarship Fund. So we're grateful for that. Um, know that those will be matched by a generous donor up to $800. So um, we are grateful to be able to give those gifts to the children of El Salvador. Uh, the ministry emphasis for the month is changing this month. Uh, we will be doing a monthly ministry emphasis that benefits integrated family and community service, which is our primary food bank. Um, our food banks in the area are seeing a lot more action. And so we as a community uh, partner want to support their efforts um, with funds so that they might continue to feed people in our local area. So thank you for all that. Know that there is a separate button on Tithely if you'd like to do it electronically. Otherwise, just pop your check in the mail and we are happy to uh, get it to the right place. So thank you. Compassionate God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you turn them into something extravagant, just as you do with our lives. 
Feed us as you can, so that we may use our gifts to the glory of your kingdom by the strength and power of the risen Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and wondrous that we should offer thanks to you, O God of abiding love. You are present and you are the presence. In the midst of darkness, you are there, you who spoke light into the world. In the midst of hopelessness, you are there, you who heard the cries of your people Israel and brought them up out of slavery. In the midst of evil, you are there, you who spoke truth through the prophets, you whose wisdom cries out to us from scripture. And in the midst of suffering, you are there, you, Word incarnate, God in flesh, Jesus Christ, suffering and the risen Lord, whose name we witnessed who with friends and enemies, saints and sinners, healed and hurting. And now, if you are at home, I invite you to hold the elements which you have in front of you and receive these words. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus sat and ate with his disciples, some doubting, some arrogant, one betraying and all broken. We too are welcome to this table, not because we are perfect, but because this is where God chooses to meet us, feed us, and give us the healing love we so desperately need. At this table, we are invited to receive the living God in bread and in wine and see the face of God in all who gather with us. So during this meal, Jesus took bread and gave thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So as God's gathered people, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so now we invite you who are gathered around this meal at home, we invite you to pause this recording and share the meal with these words. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. We invite you to do that now.
Now go forth into the world in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, and honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, abiding in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God, and we will.